Precious resources are often fiercely guarded. Only a clever wolf will ever taste mutton. And the rules remain in place in the insect world. The lacewing is a graceful insect that some mistake for a delicate fairy. But their larval stage is an earth-bound grub and an accomplished predator. But how does it steal its favored prey from watchful ant shepherds? Instinctual cunning can help you get around unnoticed in life, death, and taxonomy. Welcome back to Life, Death, and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal information. I'm Joe. And I'm Carlos. Thank you to Cassie for the creation of, the, of our theme song. To hear more of Cassie's music, please search Cassie Mich- Michelle on YouTube or Spotify. And thank you to Johanna for the creation of this week's artwork. To check that out, I keep saying follow us on Facebook or Twitter. At least on Facebook, I don't, I don't think we keep that no. up. Follow us on Twitter. If you want to see it, go to the website. Yeah, if, if, you, if, if you'd like to see the artwork, go uh, visit us at our home on the web at ldtaxonomy.com. I'm done talking about social media. I'm out of here. Yeah. Uh, and a very special thank you to our patrons, to uh, Tristan Taylor, Jesse Raspolich, Carol Raspolich, and Richard Kaspar. Thank you so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks for helping us keep the lights on. You can, uh, you know, you can also see it if you go watch the videos on YouTube. That's true. But we're hoping people from so, YouTube come here. That's true. Not the other way around. Watch it twice. Yeah, that's true. Do both. Like and subscribe. Um, and today we're talking and today we're talking about a big bug with junk in the trunk, but more on that later. And by big I mean small. Yeah, I was gonna say, I do you get a different length than me? No. This is a small boy. Yes, we're talking about the green lace wing bug it's also called an uh, aphid lion which is a lot cooler than the bug deserves um, I'm gonna call it here we're gonna call it here the the hungry hungry hoarder the hunk of junk of burning bugs and of course golden eye <laughs> which will be uh, which will make sense later when I describe the fact that it has golden eyes. <laughs> um, would you like me to taxonomize this boy? This green lace boy. Sure. It is in a kingdom you know, love, and are in. Animalia. The phylum is Arthropoda. Class, Insecta. It's an insect. Six legs. Three sections. Squishable. Uh, the order is Neurop- Neuroptera. Which is um, lace wings and ant lions and things like that. I also didn't know that ant lions were actual animals, um, which is interesting. Ant lions are like a major enemy in Half Life, and I was like, "Oh, it's just an alien," but nope, it's a real thing. If you look <laughs> it up, it's crazy looking. Um, the family is Chrysopidae. The genus is Chrysoperla. Chrysoperla, and the species is Carnia. Chrysoperla, Carnia. Which brings me to my second favorite part of the show: nitty nitty gritty nomenclature. I couldn't find a collective noun for I, the lacewing. I'm going to be honest. I like nitty gritty nomenclature more than critter groups. Critter groups because you have a chance because nitty because <laughs> there's rhyme and reason it's a you can, thing we're learning languages you can use the, you can use a little bit of uh, whatever you, your linguistic knowledge of Greek and yeah and Latin there's a thread of logic there's no yeah. thread of logic in terms of entry most of the time sometimes there is but it is often fun to find out like oh it's a murder of crows or a congregation of praying mantises or something that's that's fun to figure out but nitty-gritty nomenclature is the tried and true and sometimes it's a lot harder to figure out these uh um the meanings 
and others. Sometimes I have to break the word up into its in constituent parts and try to figure out prefix prefixes and suffixes. So I'm just digging way deep into that bachelor's degree in linguistics that I don't ever use um, and try, trying to try to parse this together. So Chrysopera carnea. What does it mean? Does it mean a pink, pearly, gold face? B clear winged predator. C carnivorous crystalline wings. Or D crystal pink hunter. So pink I'm pearly gold face clear winged predator carnivorous crystalline wings or crystal pink hunter chrysoperla carnea gold face final answer ding 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 you are correct michael scarn uh nice michael scarn I, yeah an office reference there's gonna be oh. a lot of re like deep cut references in this episode okay so let let us know if you hear if you uh, know what they're from you i'll, I'll uh, miss every office at one but how did you know how one. did how'd you figure out this this one it was because that gold face makes the least amount of sense i did that was a shot in the dark yeah that's for sure that was a shot in the dark. Lace wing, the or the the crystalline wing or whatever. That was calling my name, but I just did you what? I, yeah, that was a shot in the dark. I did like the one that said you said carnivore in. I was almost yeah. sure that would not be it because it makes the most sense. Oh yeah, turns out carnia means pink, like carnation. Ah. Um, and chryso is Greek for gold. And well, Chris Sus, I think is gold, and then making it Chris So is like, um, like it has to do with the upper body facial area, um, or Chris Op. I forgot exactly how it was broken up. Um, but Perla is pearl, so it's a pink and pearl, pink, pearly gold face. Interesting, starring. Who's Goldeneye? Is that um that's is that uh, Pierce Bronson? Yes. Okay. Yes. I have not seen that one. Um but I have played the game. I was like the most popular one when we were children in in the Bond loving era. Yeah, I wasn't allowed to watch James Bond when I was a child in the Bond lo loving era. It does have some uh it has a uh, Suggestive openings, doesn't it? I think all of the you get Bond to the movies. theme song and your mom walks in. You can't really <laughs> watch a Bond movie anymore. And there's always a, a sultry, a, 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 a sultry lady. Is sultry the right word? No. Um. Yeah. Sort of. There's always a there, there's always a lady friend in the, in the Bond movies. That's uh. Yeah. That's n not safe for work. Um. What's this thing look like? As a larva, it looks like an earwig. It's lo it's yeah. got a long brown and white body, black legs, two large hooked mandibles like a tremor's worm, um, or a falling star beast from Elden Ring. Um, mm -hmm. It has no wings, and it's a ruthless killer. But we'll talk about that later. Um, as an adult, it looks like a bright green dragonfly-ish thing much smaller than dragonfly um it has long thin green body four transparent wings so that gives it the dragonfly look um and two long antenna and they have two massive golden eyes hmm. but i did say that they were smaller than a bread basket uh, bread basket and uh bigger than a microwave so how big is it it can't be smaller than a bread unless it, you're talking it's, about it's the other way around. The bread it's, basket. It, you're supposed to of say small. <laughs> you're supposed to say smaller than a microwave, bigger than a 
a bread box. <laughs> um, uh, that's a big bread basket is what I'm thinking. Uh, so welcome to the beloved <clears throat> Measure Up segment, the official listener's favorite part of the show. The part of the show we, when we present the animal size and dimensions in relatable terms through a quiz that's fun for the whole family. It's also part of the show that's introduced by you when you send in audio of yourself saying, singing, or chittering the words measure up into ldtaxonomy at gmail.com. We don't have a new measure up intro, but that means we get to hear from an animal and Carlos has to guess what it is. It's a Sisyphusian fate. Yes. Uh, without further ado, the listener's favorite part of the show. Is that, that sounds like Siren Head. Uh, it's that uh, one little alien that dies uh, in a horrible, fiery crash in Star Wars Episode One during the pod races. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is that, was that not even close. Is that A, a Katie did? Is it B, a mole cricket? Is it C, a B? Or is it D, a Goliath beetle? Katie did. Final answer. I should have made B, a B, but I thought it would be funny to fun. say. Is it B, a C, a B? Katie did. Final answer. Yes. The correct answer is mole cricket. Uh. It kind of looks like that guy. <laughs> That that makes that sound. I uh, I saw one of these in real life, and I was like, "What the heck is that?" Because it definitely really? looks very alien. I want to see and, more uh, cricket. Whoa! Yeah, that is weird. Oh, I have seen these guys. Actually, I've seen these guys quite a bit. Yeah, they're pretty common, and they're just very alien looking. So when you see them, it's like, who is she? <laughs> Who's, Who's that, that lady? lady? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I, I, those are terrifying though. You're just like, this is a mix between a lobster and a spider and a cockroach, and it's definitely got plans for me. <laughs> okay, let's talk about wingspan or wings pan. If you like Disney. Um, sure. They're between 6 to over f- 65 millimeters. Can, it can have a, quite a wingspan. Some people say it looks like a fairy. Because of these lacy wings. So how many Speaking lace wings? Wings pan. Yeah. How many w- w- lace wing wings pans? Go into the length of the Mississippi River. Actually, a wingspan would be delicious. It would be seasoned. The pan itself wings. wouldn't be, but like a nice cast iron for frying up some wings. I mean, if it's like if it's if it's a cast iron that like absorbs the flavor, that's the point. Yeah, you're gonna probably you're gonna want to put them on the wings pan to uh, lock in the flavor, and then throw them in the air fryer. Um, yeah. so here's a hint. The fastest time to row the length of the Mississippi river in a canoe took 17 days, 19 hours in 46 minutes. And it was done by KJ Milhone, Casey Milhone, Rod Price, and Bobby Johnson. In April, 2021, Bobby Johnson sounds like a British innuendo for a crime. <laughs> It sure does. (laughs) Or he pulled a Bobby Johnson. Uh, Yeah, you would have to pull a Bobby Johnson in the bait and tackle store if the rod price is too high. A Bobby Johnson. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. (laughs) (laughs) Because Rod Price was the uh, name of the other guy, one of the other guys. Yeah, the price was too high for a rod at a fishing store. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um goodness gracious. I hurt a little bit. Um <laughs> I'm gonna say it's two thousand miles. I think we've talked about the Mississippi River 
river before. It's one of the longest rivers in the world. I'm pretty sure 2,000 miles is the is the number that just popped into my head. And I don't have enough room in my head for more numbers. So let's go with that. You said 65 millimeters? That's correct. Gosh. What is, <laughs> mi- what is millimeters to... Let's just That's do, 2.5 let's, inches. Let's just go straight to miles. Let's make this easy on me. No, it's that's actually not easy. Let's, let's switch it over to feet. Okay. Uh, 50 million. Final that doesn't answer? sound right. Yep. 50 million. The correct answer is 57 million, 936,000. Oh, that is a nursing school victory. That is an A. That is an A, buddy. Yeah. I, nice. You're right. The, I did. The, the old Mississippi is uh, 2,300, 2,340 miles, 3,700 kilometers. Take that, Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn, who had to raft <laughs> down it. Um, so... Uh, let's talk about eggs. Let's let's have some eggs talk. I love talking. And about by eggs talk, I mean egg stock. Uh, eggs are laid on a thin one centimeter long strand on the underside of leaves. How many lace wing egg stalks go into the longest human hair? Here's a hint, and this is something I just re- realized today. Humans might have the longest hair on Earth. Uh, contenders are horses and musk oxen. The average human adult taps out at around 100 centimeters or 39 inches, but individuals can grow hair much, much longer than that. Musk oxen have an average of around 40 inches. So let's look at one more inch. One more inch. And the longest human hair was achieved by... <sighs> One second. One second. Let me just get my... When I try to picture an ox covered in 40-inch hair strands, I just think of Snuffleupagus. Uh, it was achieved by Z Chi Ping in two, two, 2004. She was only 13 years old. You know, children tap out on average as sh- with shorter hair than adults, and she has the record at 13. It's like they're, everyone's tapping out with hair. Like you're you've you've put it into a into a triangle or an arm bar and it's tapping out. Yeah. Uh um, the thing the thing maxing out, I guess I should say. Um but I what why is human hair so long? And I think I realize it's because on if you just if you don't wash it, if you just leave it, if you live like a caveman, it will not grow that long. It'll grow long, but it won't grow like like 40, 50, 60 inches um, because it, hair goes in cycles and uh, there's the follicle. The follicle has a growth cycle and then a uh, recovery cycle. And in the recovery cycle, it like pushes the hair, like you lose the hair and then you grow another one. Um so, but in, and it goes into the recovery cycle because of a lack of nutrients, like the hair, it, the, the, literally the taps run dry on, on the blood flow in the follicle for that hair. So it needs a new one. You need to replace it. So if you take care of your hair, it can grow longer and stronger. Um, and musk oxen don't care about that. So they're not going to do it. So if musk, mu- Musk oxen, man, that's hard to say. Um, if they had like even been the slightest sense of hygiene, they could just totally sweep the floor with us when it comes to hair growth. And they'd literally sweep the floor. Yeah, it's good to have them if you want cleaner floors. I have. <laughs> well, three they're of making them a myself. mess while they're sweeping it. So it's like that monster from Monsters Inc. That um, it's like a it's like a slug that is responsible for mopping the floor. So he's bopping the floor and then just leaving a trail of slug <laughs> behind him. Um, all right, how many um, how many inches is the um, is the egg stock? 
Uh, one centimeter. How many inches is that? You gotta, you gotta put this in the freedom units. I'm not about to do centimeters. Inches is too I big. Didn't, my my forefathers there are not centimeters the American on Revolution your... to still use centimeters. Yes, they did. Your there are centimeters on your American made measuring tapes. Probably. No, there aren't. I I scribbled them all out with a pencil. <laughs> you scratched them out with a yes. With I, scr- a I scratched fly. out all the all the <laughs> with a <the> freedom. <laughs> it's a zero point three, almost almost a point four inches. All right, all right. 300. 300 egg stalks. Final answer. That's the end of your egg stalk. Going to the length of this person's hair. The true answer is 562 egg stalk. Oh, that's long hair. Though, is that like 15 foot hair? Chi Ping's hair was 5.3. Six meters or 18 feet and five inches. 18 feet. Yeah. That's annoying to have. That would be annoying to have. That's Rapunzel. Well, she certainly has it in a braid, I'm sure. Still, it's got to weigh a lot. Yeah. yeah oh, it, I went on a kind of a deep dive. Can you guess <laughs> in terms of hair color? Who has the most hair, the most amount of hairs on their heads in terms of hair color? So you've got what? blondes, like how brunettes, much? black hair, and red hair. How Who much? has the most hair? Uh, how, which individuals have the most or how much if you which took hair all the color? human hair on earth and put, and oh, put no. it? Oh, no, individuals. Which indi- well, so oh. basically hair growth varies by color yeah, but is one of the, it's one of the factors that varies hair growth so oh, gotcha gotcha because like obviously the answer would be black hair because that's the vast majority of the world has black hair oh you mean um, like if you combine them all no yeah i'm talking but, about on, the, on an individual head huh um i don't know if the answer is interesting i i'm gonna go with redheads that's incorrect, and it's the most incorrect because redheads have the least amount of hair. <laughs> uh, but the most Never amount mind. of hair is blonde. The second is brunette. The third is black. And the fourth is uh, uh, redheads. Hmm. I w- there See, must I w- be a difference between African bl- black hair, although there's a lot of Africans have brown hair. Or like dark brown hair, but you have like um, Indian Indian hair is like really yeah. thick and full, and so like that's what I was thinking. Like, oh, that's a lot of, but maybe that's not a lot of hair follicles. It's just really good hair. Color is just one of the factors. I'm sure, like country, like national, uh, like origin is a huge factor as well. Yeah, and then there's anime hair, like pink and blue and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. so who who knows how many hair follicles are in that spiky mess uh okay uh that's all i got do you have any fast facts before we get into the major fact i do so despite the fact you mentioned the mississippi and uh the longest hair was that was someone from china um the uh green lacewing lives exclusively in western europe (laughs) um from Spain to the south to Norway in the north to Greece in the east. That all worked really well, by the way. <laughs> um, and that was unintentional. Um, but yes, Western Europe. As larva, they are ravenous hunters. Uh, they feed on aphids and other small insects. They can even kill and eat larger insects like caterpillars. Or they even eat each other. They will climb onto their prey and inject them with a with digestive enzymes, like stomach acid enzymes, um, that will liquefy. I wrote liquefy, which is that sounds somehow m- makes it sound even grosser, but l- liquefies their insides and turns them into a hard shell smoothie. It's a lot how, like how spiders um, kill and eat their prey. They will 
paralyze them and then basically dump a bunch of digestive fluids into them, turning them into a just me- melting them, but they still have their carapace. So it's like, ah, I just got a, like a coconut that you just break open at the top and stick a, a little umbrella in there. Um, but you're also drinking your own stomach acid. So, you know, there's always that there's always a downside to liquefying your prey's internal organs. And I think that's one of them. Um, they, as adults, they communicate with vibrations. Um, they are not, particularly strong flyers despite having four wings which is twice as much as birds so no excuse there um their golden eyes that we mentioned earlier um have a very high sensitivity to green which allows them to recognize fresh green leaves um and that is usually where they can find aphids and also a good place to uh lay eggs um, and also just a good, like a, a good protected place. So they, they're looking for fresh green leaves and their eyes help them do that. Um, the larvae are actually used as a uh, biological control. They will, farmers will introduce them and <laughs> to, to, to kill, uh, aphids and other, uh, uh, insects that attack, um, attack their crops that eat their crops because this the 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 lacewing doesn't eat plants it eats it's a predator but i think we've i i feel like humanity should have already come to the consensus that um using animals <laughs> to tr- to to combat the spread of other animals it just w- so rarely works well <laughs> it's like god oh, man Maybe. we have so many so much so many lilies in the southeastern United States, you know what we need? Hippos. We need lots of hippos to eat them all. Uh, <laughs> we have so many of this small snail that's it's just eating all of our plants. We should get giant African land snails and bring them over here to kill all of the small snails. It's really the... We already knew this with the lady who swallowed the fly. Like, that was yes. to teach us that exact lesson. That is an, that is an age-old teaching that is an adage from long ago that that's not that's not how you handle these types of situations it sure isn't but all that being said it seems to be working uh, because they actually have a pretty short lifespan after hatching the larva will eat and molt three times over the course of about three weeks until they spin a silk cocoon under a plant leaf and two weeks later the adult emerges um and so Altogether, they don't live for much longer than a couple of months, and the adult and these they don't pose any threat to the actual the crops themselves, and they tend to not stay in the same place if there is no more food. So they will they will eat all the food in the area, all of the you know eliminate the pests and the aphids, and then they'll move on, or die out, and their generations will move on. So it's not like now we've introduced this predator and now we have these predators all over the place like the other so situations can. i mentioned so, so it's so garden far friend going well garden your your garden friend your garden golden eye um and i will leave it at that that's all i got okay. i will I'll, I'll lateral it over to you for the major fact so well, i'm that's calling this major term. fact um do you know what it means it means to throw the ball to someone after the the play starts. Like you you toss it to someone and they have to be like in front of you, I think. No, the opposite. Oh no, they have to be behind you. Yes, that one. Yeah. So you can kind of just so, like throw the ball from person to person after it's been thrown over. So if you're behind the line of scrimmage, if you show like the quarterback is behind the line of scrimmage and they can throw the ball forward. But if you pass the line of scrimmage, you can no longer throw the ball forward, but you can throw it backwards or laterally, like literally like side by side. So like if you get a new job um, and you're making the same amount of money, you have the same benefits. It's a lateral lateral move move. because you didn't make any forward motion. You didn't make any latitudinal. 
Yeah. L- latitude um, but is I'm, up and down. I'm calling this major fact a bug in sheep's clothing. Mm. Cause they wear wool. I'm just kidding. Uh, if you, if you live in the South, you will see lace wings. I couldn't find a lot on the Southern lace wing or any, the, the lace wings in the bugs, the, the larval stage that you might find in the South. Uh, so that's why we went with a green one and it's in Europe. Um, but if you're in the South, uh, like we are, um, but more specifically in Mississippi and, uh, some of those classically Southern, Southern States, um, you may see a piece of lint or a bit of forest debris rolling across the grounds or maybe on a branch, most, most likely on a branch. Uh, but this pile of junk isn't flowing in the wind. It's moving with authority like the oldest of the family. That's the first reference for people to say, tell me if they knew what it was. Um, the lace wing larva stage um, is often called junk bugs or trash bugs or garbage bugs. And it's not a put down just because of behavior. Um, this is because of uh, the fact that they collect garbage and strap it to their backs like the Yole of Londor. I know that one. <laughs> I knew you would. I knew you would know that one. Uh, these little trash collectors uh, picking up de- detritus and carrying it with them like tiny hobos riding the rails is a cute concept until you take a closer look at what they're actually carrying. If you were to remove the junk from the junk bug and separate the pieces, you realize that the junk bug's junk is bugs. The carcasses of other insects hollowed out and desiccated. Um, the, the junk, junk bug, bug has bug junk. In his trunk, yeah. The mm-hmm. junk bug is making a bug backpack and not just any junk will do. <laughs> I know that one too. <laughs> uh, so not uh, so. Not only does the bug of junk have trunk have a trunk of bug, um, he keeps the corpses of his kills. Junk bugs are predators and that have really sharp, stabby mouth parts. So when they catch prey, they will slurp out the soft bits beneath the exoskeleton. Then the wrinkled up wrapper is placed on their backs and stacked in a way that's kind of whack. So, I don't know that one. <laughs> it's so not. The that's just rhymes. Can... Yeah, kind of. So they're in... the uh, they're Michael Myers. They're. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, oh, the village the guy, thing? or not the village? Uh, the bu- uh butterfly. What's the butterfly movie? <laughs> The butterfly uh, effect? <laughs> no, with uh, Clarice. Clarice? Buffalo Bill. Buffalo Bill. Oh, yes, yes. Buffalo What's Bill. What's that movie? Silence of the Lambs. Oh, um, okay. I have not seen that one. But yes, I've, I know the butterfly reference. In addition to insect bodies, the junk bug might collect moss and other bits and pieces that are lying around. But why do they do this? Some suggest that they do it uh, as a way to camouflage from predators, uh, like sneaking around in a bush like a cartoon character. Um, But perhaps the extra exoskeleton offers excellent armor. I don't know. Um, But the real reason is even weirder. The junk bug is also called the aphid lion. Like you, uh, I think you mentioned that. You talked about. Yeah, yeah, the aphid lion. the, The things that people call it. Um, because of their favorite prey, aphids, like you mentioned. But aphid, aphids have watchful shepherds that don't like lions in their fields. As we know, ant colonies keep and protect aphids to harvest the sweet honeydew sweat that aphids produce. A junkless bug that's looking to drink and uh, an aphid milkshake might be swarmed and tossed off, tossed off a tree like it was caught by an invader while enjoying the Oracle's Envoy's tunes. What? That went off the deep end. I, I, you lost me. <laughs> so 
I said a junkless bug, a junk bug that doesn't have any junk. Yes. And he's trying to eat some aphids. Will be swarmed by their the ants' protectors and tossed off a tree like it was caught by an invader while enjoying the Oracle Envoy's tunes. The Oracle Envoy. That's in Elden Ring. The wow. the the white headed <laughs> snowmen with the the <clears throat> horns in Hallowed Tree. Oh, Oracle Envoy. Got yes. it. Yes. <laughs> That's a very, I guess, a very deep cut because you'd have to. The, the game doesn't tell you what those things are called. Yeah, I did not know what they were called. They were just. I guess it were... does. The envoy's horn is the name of the. If you pick up the horn. Um, yeah, they they were just. Um, uh, what's the what's that toy that you hit and it just comes back? Weebles. Um, oh. Um, yeah, it's yeah. the Weeble Wobble Sultan. Yes. We will wobbles where they don't fall down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what what I thought of them. So anyway, the shrewd junk collecting bug will cloak itself in an aphid essence to sneak into the flock unawares. So it's literally a wolf in sheep's clothing. It's a bug in aphids clothing uh, (laughs) trying to get into the flock of aphids so that the shepherd ants don't um, throw them off the tree. Flock of aphids is my favorite hymn. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's, that, isn't that's, that yeah, there really is a wolf in sheep's clothing. It's like, and oh, like, I need to get to this uh, aphid like junk that the husks of exoskeleton that's on their back easily doubles them in size. Like it's so much. It's a little like so. I, it seems barbaric, but humans have been killing things and wearing their skin forever. That's true. So yeah. you know, it's kind of a thing that predators do sometimes. Smart ones, it, at least. It, I mean, and it's not even just like it puts the lotion on the skin, or else it gets the hose again. It's not even just for some sick pleasure. Like it's for a good reason, so that they can eat more, and that we can so, not freeze to death in the winter. Is that another Silence of the Lambs reference? <laughs> yeah. It was kind of kind of returning to the reference rather than... A second one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's all oh, I got. This is another one of those situations where the larva is a lot more interesting than the, the adult. Like the woolly bear moth and the... Um, uh, the Apomis beetle. Yeah, well, the lacewing adult is a friend, and these guys are lions. Do you think that, like, the adult ever tries to become friends, and they're like, we remember what you did in your youth? Yeah. And they're like, and they're like I'm, I'm a different bug now. But they're not. They still eat other bugs, but they just don't <laughs> wear them. They're not. They've they're, transcended they're, that. They're not gross about it. A bug now, if you throw them off the hallowed tree, they can just fly. That's true. Not well. They'll just, they'll kind of like stutter and and fall, but they'll get there. Despite having four wings, mm-hmm. which I, I feel like get it together, you know. They have four wings, and two of them are four wings. Like God gave you extra wings, you you should be. You should be sending it, not not struggling. <laughs> you didn't you didn't do the homework. <laughs> Bugs fly like like with minimal effort because they're so light. All they need is a little bit, and but but the smallest gusts can throw them off course. So they just kind of go where they go. The lacewing is like that student that is like is really smart and has a lot of promise, but they're, they're, they're not doing any of the work. They, they don't care. And so they're, they're slacking in school, but you like, you know, they have potential mm-hmm. because they have, so I'm just wings. like, yeah, they, they, but they have bugs. all of this, like the, all this, all this potential, all this talent. That's just the, this sitting there and they're just not utilizing it because they don't want it enough. No, you know what? It's like God's plan. Like a butterfly looks like it's flying haphazardly, but they can make their way all the way down from 
all the way down to Mexico, you know, and back up to the Midwest. So, you know, you may not see if you take a close look uh, where the plan is going, but if you take a, if you just zoom out, which is the, this, this show's theme, zoom uh, out, zoom out, but just take a zoom out, but you've got dragonflies, which are really good at flying, like flying really fast and then stopping and hovering. I mean, Evan Rude's got this and <laughs> the, like it's the that that's why i know that the the lace wing has that potential because i've seen it before in a student just like him <laughs> now that student was me <laughs> <laughs> i was just like you lace wing but i'm the i'm evan line. root <laughs> okay this, this, is, this episode this episode is full of really um deep cuts so i'm sorry if this left every anyone in the dust <laughs> I don't know what Evan Root is. Have you not seen The Rescuers? Oh, I have a million years ago. Yeah, he's the dragonfly that flies him around the 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 bayou. Evan Rude. I was hearing Evan Root. Oh no, Evan, Evan Rude. Not that that's a more sensible name. Um. Yeah. That's the the green lace wing. You got anything else? That's all I got. All right, so for you out there in Podcastia, work on your flying skills. Grab what you can with your mandibles and wear the carapaces of your slain foes like the green lace wing here in Life, Death, and Taxonomy. Hey Taxonomy Titans, I just want to remind you that we now have a Patreon. Patrons can see full video episodes and get shoutouts on the show. But ultimately, it's a way for you to help us cover some costs and get even better. Still, reviews are the best way to help us grow. So if you haven't left one yet, we'd really love to hear from you. As always, thanks for listening and engaging. podcast <laughs> I didn't even plan any of these rhymes or references they just kind of float out of me like candles messiah I thought you said candles messiah <laughs> like candles like candles messiah <laughs> like candles messiah. <laughs> what kind of candles are these what are we talking about here